because I'm with you through thick and thin. Whatever trouble you are in, I don't care whatever you do. Just know that I love you. Oh, oh, oh I love you. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, we're back. My name is Joe. People call me Smoking Joe. And we are here. Season 3, Episode 3. We finally did it. We got my good friend Michael Silverman, a.k.a. that one guy. We got two guys here on the internet. Well, three. We count Mr. Lovely John Marin, Vicarious Visions, producer of the show. I definitely would count him, although you may not see him. You might, you might have the good fortune of hearing him. Very excited about having Mike on the show. He's played Galactic to get down, I believe, three times. Three times the last three years. Let's see. Talk about what I've been up to. Well, here's what I've been up to this uh, this last week or so. I've been recording and writing music. There was a beginning of the quarantine. I was just doing a bunch of covers, and I was like, I'm just going to wait until you know inspiration strikes and I get in the mood. And that mood the last week and a half has struck. I've been writing music. I've been recording it been collaborating with some people i'm very excited about that so if you are waiting for a bunch of covers in the cover challenge might have to wait a little while i'm loving the writing process at the moment mike dylan was here last last week wonderful man really good to reconnect with that guy uh, we saw a puppet show at the end of his set as well as his awesome brand of jazz punk jam fusion percussion madness uh, he had nothing but wonderful things to say about our mic here tonight. I think we're all old friends, and it's just great to have everybody here on the Smoking Joe Show. If you're watching this uh, very live and right now on the internet, please share this event. Make sure to share it. Start your, your start your own watch party. Do your thing. Make sure your friends know that that one guy is on the show tonight, and we really want you to be a part of it. If you're watching this on YouTube in the future, the best thing you can do to help us out is smash that subscribe button right around here-ish somewhere. Uh, please subscribe. We, uh, I come out with all sorts of Smoke and Joe material, live stream videos, all sorts of other stuff. It's a good gateway into what we do. Big thanks to our number one sponsor, Shadow Wick Creations, the best candles this side of Jupiter. They have an exclusive monthly Galactic Get Down candle collection. Each month features three unique candles inspired by Galactic Get Down. Buy a candle and show your support for the festival and the few folks that throw it. For more information on the candle collection and all the great products from Shadow Wick, check out their Etsy page, etsy.com slash shop slash Shadow Wick Creations. And hey, do you like how I just did a little little Joe Marshall for Shadow Wick Creations? Well, we do have more and more and more sponsorship opportunities available. Vicarious Visions, as well as myself and lots of other folks we work with, are doing a ton of events, virtual events. Vicarious Visions and The Smoking Joe Show now have sponsorship opportunities available. If you or someone you know has a business that would like to support the local music scene through our unique brand of programming, contact, programming comma, contact Vicarious Visions on Facebook today with several productions like The Smoking Joe Show, Romer Dome Familia, and live concert series all the time. Vicarious Visions has unique opportunities for you to show your commitment to the local music and arts community. I would also like to take a time every week to personally shout out a big thank you to my patrons. That's right, those folks who subscribe to me on their on my Patreon. I come out with some news. I think I'm about due for a new a new gift surprise. Uh, they have the new Dead Larry single already, which is set to come out this Saturday. I think I'm going to need to appease the patrons. So if you want to get on board, get special presents and deals and content from me. That is patreon.com slash smoking Joe music. Smoking Joe music. I'm slowly changing all my stuff to not include my last name because I, I realized that, you know, most folks, I don't need to make folks spell that every day. It's not, that's not very nice. Anyway, uh, before we get to our wonderful special guest, we have one of my favorite segments with one of my favorite new theme segment songs, The Weekend Get Down. Here we go. Gonna stay up late, gonna hit the town. Get down, get down. You did. Pick your booty up. Oh, yeah. And shake it all around. It's the week. Can't get down. Oh, 
All right. The weekend get down. What is getting down around town this weekend? That's right. And if you're listening to that track, that is me playing everything but the drums. I had a really, really fun time uh, getting that bass, that bass line worked out. The weekend stay in is what we call it right now. I know I got get down behind me, but we're going to have to get down on, on our own for just a little while longer. The Weekend Stay In is presented by Kind Jams Minnesota, your one-stop shop for all the jammy news and events here in our great state of Minnesota. I remind single release Bad Eye, now streaming everywhere. I remember finally, it's been a while. We miss you and can't wait until we get the chance to jam party with you all again. We've been using this time to work on new music, and we're stoked to announce that we're releasing a new song for you today. Bad Eye is now available for download, streaming on all the platforms. That is neat. Love I reminds. Love everything they do. Don't just listen to that song. Listen to all the songs. Don't, you know, don't limit yourself to just one. You got to take them all. They're like potato chips. Love I reminds. Been talking with Sam Okari a bunch during this lockdown, making sure those boys are doing all right. Let's see. Sat saying live stream Friday, May 15th, 2020. That is tomorrow from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Given the current situation surrounding COVID 19, it has been a tough time for all small business but especially independent bands like satsung and smoke joe and iron star and did larry not only does the business suffer but also those that make it function including my band and my team that is why on friday may 15th at 6 p.m mountain time we are going to be doing a live stream fundraiser from the satsang facebook and youtube pages where all the proceeds will go to supporting my team i will be playing some music answering some questions and the boys will be sharing some songs as well Make sure to RSVP to get all the details. And that was from Drew, I imagine. Drew of Satsung. Wonderful man, intense person, knows what he wants, knows and, and does all does what he needs to do to get it. Very, very love that guy. And he loves his fans and the and and you know the humans. I think he loves humans more more than more than he likes. I think that's kind of a common thing right now. I love humans right now so much, but people are driving me insane. Saturday. MJG's Bloody Brunch featuring Dimitri Rollis Saturday at 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. MJG presents Bloody Brunch number six featuring Dimitri Rollis of Frogleg and Rampant Roots Saturday, May 9th at 11 a.m. on MJG's Facebook page. And 100% of your tips go to the artists. So MJG doing their part to keep the music flowing. Make sure to grab your Bloody Mary. Or for me, I like to make a mocktail in the mornings when I'm feeling fancy. A little bit, you know, like some juice, a little energy drink, and some sparkly water. That's what I do. Saturday, Minneapolis Music Movement. I love this thing. I learned about this last week as I was reading it. Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. Since Minnesota closed its bars and venues, get this, it has left many musicians with zero opportunities to perform their magic, literally and figuratively. We at Green Nectar Cultivation saw an opportunity to help those musicians be able to showcase their talent without large crowds. We want to bring live music right to your street. All you have to do is message us on Facebook with your address, then we will bring the music to you. That's right, you out there. We also want to state that this is not a time to invite your friends and family. If crowds start to develop, we will be forced to shut down. We will do our best to make it to all the requested addresses. As of right now, we are limiting the neighborhoods we'll be playing in to Uptown and Northeast. As time goes on and we see a demand for more music, we will expand to other neighborhoods around the Twin Cities. We will be live streaming each performance so you don't miss a beat. If you would like to donate, please head to gncultivation.com to donate to the live performers. No amount is too little. For musicians wanting to participate, please message us with a link to your EPK and band name. Please continue to practice social distancing and we will continue to bring the music literally, quite literally, to you. Stay calm and be safe. So that's really cool. The group that is getting musicians, taking them out onto the street and performing up at you, into you, at, at you, at you, in your building, in your home. I think that's pretty cool. Saturday night, Hoodfellas doing a live stream at 2 p.m. Sorry, not Saturday night. Saturday at 2 p.m. Hoodfellas is back for a live streaming acoustic set of fish music. So all you fish fans out there, make sure to tune in Hoodfellas at 2 p.m. Saturday, Saturday night. Mark Joseph's Saturday night special. He's on number nine. Holy cow, time flies. Mark Joseph's Saturday night special number nine, Saturday, May 16th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time at Mark's Joseph at Facebook page from Rice Street Circus Studio. Special guests call-ins giveaways and more everyone's got the show internet show fever sunday night oh my goodness it's dimitri rollis again dimitri rollis and friends live stream sunday 6 to 7 30 with dimitri rollis colin mcrae hammergren and some guy named joe Barron is going to be playing bass not sure 
if he's a trustworthy man, but I'll give it a shot. Next weekend, Happy Place, a virtual festival experience, May 22nd to May 24th. So get ready for a weekend filled with music, art, friends, and family. Even though we're distance, we can still be together in our happy place. Bring the weirdness, costumes, and shenanigans. We will be creating a Venmo for Be The Change Prof due to the Project Earth being canceled. This is by Plo Soda, spreading love and positivity through music, art, state to state. And if I'm not mistaken, our man behind the scenes, Mr. John Marin of Vicarious Visions, is helping make those wheels turn as well. We're all over the internet, folks. We're internet. We are virtual folks now. Speaking of virtual folks, uh, one of my biggest accomplishments the last two months has been this weird, massive Facebook group we all like to call Live Stream Cover Challenge. That's right. With so many people streaming, I had this idea, Live Stream Cover Challenge. The guidelines where you challenge an artist to play a song. The artist has a day to learn it. Once the artist learns the song, you go live in the group and perform it for everyone. So this was a, an easy, simple idea for me and my friend blew up we have 33,000 members in the group right now we have merchandise available all at livestreamcoverchallenge.com go to the website to learn more and see some videos and kind of get an idea of what we're doing there uh and uh yeah and then we got merch we got ned ned barclay of uh, dead larry and iron star making the merch for us it's all very exciting the video we pulled from livestream cover challenge this week is an original song which kind of blew everyone away. He's a, a new poster and a, and a young man named Nick Montz. And The Fire is the name of the song. And it was a Sunday original. So tune in, check this out. And that's what we got for you. We can get down. Okay. This is the only song I've ever written. It's called The Fire. It's a bit of a bummer. Um, but for those of you who know me, which is none of you, that's kind of what I'm into. Summer spent on rooftops, 
so long ago it strains me to recall I should have worn you proudly each and every one and all Now I know there's of me in the corner of your closet or tucked in that old wallet you know the one and though it breaks me down to say it probably ought to stay that way I spend my time too close to the wire it's clear now I'm your fire Thank you much Bye We are back We are back Hello thank you for being here watching the Smoking Joe show and our special guest that one guy Mike, how you doing? Oh, oh. good. <laughs> Woo. Did you start the howling group on Facebook? Have you seen this? I've seen the group. I didn't start it, but the howl uh, predates the group. I gotta say, <laughs> I've been doing the howl since 2003, I think. But uh, been howling. But you know, I'm, I'm all, all for the howl. I think it's a beautiful dude. I, I'm 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 proof of you howling at least since 2008. Thank you. See, we have witnesses that so, I I was so, I was early, you know, an early adopter. Yeah. Yeah, it was 10,000 10, Lakes, 2008. Were you there? Oh, my God. There. That was uh, that was one of my favorite gigs I've ever played, I think. That was my second festival ever. I had no idea what was happening. Wow. And I was playing. I was playing. So, like, I extra did because I got treated really well, and I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, I, was, I hear you. I think was that was insane. one of my early festivals playing, period, too, and it kind of created my whole uh, Midwestern thing. It was really it was a magical yeah. thing, for sure. Yeah, so, you know, I think that, yeah, it was a magic time. Well, we got you here. We're going to play some games. Yay. We're going to play a game. A game, a game, a game, a game called Where'd It Go, Joe? The answer for the viewers is not in my butt. <laughs> Who you say it? <laughs> so you got that one guy, Joe, where'd it go? It, but, but, as a, but as an obvious answer. Look, you got a nice little grid of me. We're going to be asked some trivia, trivial questions. And the person who gets it right gets to do something. <laughs> Better be something good. Yeah, I think we get to pick a... Yeah, would, if you get your trivia question right, then you pick two squares, square. and hopefully you the pick pictures a behind those squares will match. Oh, Sweet. I see. So we yeah, got to remember like, stuff. It's like concentration, like, like concentration. you played in kindergarten. Ah, I was bad at it then, and I'm going to be bad yeah, at it too. Now. Well, I've only got four pictures per board for you guys to match, so it isn't anything real Ooh. complex. Yes, nice. Makes you feel good, like a five hundred piece puzzle or like a hundred piece puzzle. <laughs> All right. So, who wants to start? Joe. Me. I'll start. I'll I'll be a shining example of. <laughs> All right. So, who is the youngest person to have a chart-topping solo single in nineteen seventy? 1970 youngest person uh michael jackson that is saying. correct nice <laughs> i, I was like first <laughs> <laughs> yeah no the next one's going to be about you know math or i don't know history is the strongest but at least music history all right so i'm looking at the thing i'm looking at this and i need to lift one up or lift two up yeah uh, two well let's start with one okay i'm gonna lift up two the number two Oh, and now pick another one. Okay. And six. Oh, hey! No, no, those are close. They're those, not the same? Those aren't quite a match. Uh, okay, sorry. The bottom of my screen is not as... Hold on. Okay, I still can't tell, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> now it's your turn, Mike. You got to remember right. where that stuff is, though. Oh, jeez. I got to remember stuff and know stuff. 
You gotta you gotta answer questions right and remember things. And know things. Yep. Oh, all right. I'm ready. Let's all see right, let's see here. Um This uh Seattle Grunge band uh was affectionately abbreviated P O T U S A. Oh jeez. Uh oh I think it was Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Nirvana, Mud, Honey, Alice in Chains? <laughs> Not quite. Can I steal Jeez. it? <laughs> sure, Joe, you can steal it. Uh, Presidents of the United States of America. Oh, that... they're not a grunge band, are they? Well, yeah, they, I guess they are. I mean, the, the people who wrote this trivia question seem to think so. At least. <laughs> <laughs> they're post-grunge. They're post-grunge. Post-grunge, post... al- early alternative. Post-dad rock. Yeah, oh, yeah, but they're dad rock now. <laughs> oh, my God. I love Grand that. Dad, stuff. Right? I only know their one album you know, with all the hits on it, but I love it. All yeah, the songs are rule. about animals. <laughs> they rule. Yeah. Like, all right. They play, I don't, they play I don't two want... string basses. Yeah, I don't want to pick though. We, we should. Get, I'll take another question. I don't want to like. I, I don't want completely. Can't you don't. Steal. You don't want to see where any other images are behind the game. Do board? I get to just for stealing it? Yeah. I mean, you can pick two more cards. You all still right. have to try to make a match. Let's do five. There's five. Uh, and four. And four. Up. I got to remember now. Things. All right. So All right. since Joe got that question right, we'll ask Mike another question. Sweet. I'll try to answer right this time. I won't uh, yell out ten bands. That was <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What Beatles song advises... One thing I can tell you is you got to be free. Come together. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> you ever hear, Mike, ever you hear the Aerosmith version in the in the beater in the Bee Gees Peter Frampton Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? The Bee Gees and the Sergeant Pepper's what? What was the, the question? The Bee Gees, the Bee Gees, and Peter Frampton made a, made a Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band movie in the 1970s, and Aerosmith does come together, and it changed my life when I was a little kid. Oh, Check there you go. Out. Yeah, but so now I get to pick pick two things. Yep. Yep. Okay, two things. Uh, let's do the bottom right corner and the top left corner. Ah! Oh. Wait, oh. I got it right. No. no. Different mustaches. Dang. Yeah, the mustaches are different. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing this is playing on theme. You are a mustache <laughs> mustache <laughs> enthusiast aficionado. Could, I mean, mustaches or butts, you know? Amen. Or ducks or shoes. <laughs> <laughs> or a cool Superman. hat. Bowler hats. You got a lot of cool ability, you know, got a lot of nice brands going on. Oh, a lot of also, isms. I want to say the chat, the chat agrees that they are not grunge. Yeah, or thank you. Thank you, chat. <laughs> Post grunge. <laughs> <laughs> the chat erupted and like, that's not grunge. Okay, so. <laughs> all right. So, uh, question, right? Yeah, let's see here. Um. There's so many to choose from. Uh, how many singles did Bruce Springsteen put atop the Billboard charts in the entire 1980s? Jesus. How many in the entire 1980s? <laughs> That's a hard one, man. Uh, I'm gonna go with the uh, nine. That was it. Was close. It was none. Whoa! None. Trick question and an impossible question. <laughs> Man. Okay. Well, that's fine. Oh, uh, let's see. Yes, that's fine. Oh, uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, who sold part of his ownership of Beatles songs to Sony for ninety-five million dollars in nineteen ninety-five? Michael Jackson. That is correct. Oh. Paul was none too pleased. With that whole deal. He's not amused, no. <laughs> um, so I get to pick two more. Yep. Let's go four and five. So there's four. Oh, I'm supposed to match these. And five, yep. Oh, now I know where they all are. Sheesh. Do you? Do yeah. you? No, I mean, I know where the mustaches ones are. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. All right. Keep going. Um, Continue. Joe, what yep. crooner's mother warned him not to change his name to Frankie Satin? Uh, Frank Sinatra? 
That is correct. Nice. Sammy Davis Jr. John, <laughs> John Cougar Mellon Camp Sinatra. Yeah. What crooner? Vix from Star Trek. From Vic Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go to Vix. That's Deep Space Nine reference for those of you out there following along. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna go two and four. There's number two. And there's oh, number so four. Very they're slightly so close. Different. Those, what? Are, those are the two that are super close. Oh, dude. That's stupid. I don't yep. remember. Yeah, no, I don't remember no, now. I, I think remember we've either. I think we've seen almost all of them now. We haven't seen eight. I would have gotten eight, but I thought I was right. No, we did see eight. We did see eight. Saw eight. Mike's yeah. first guess was one and eight. Was my first guess, and now I can't remember where it matches. Yeah, well, I definitely don't remember eight then. <laughs> dang it, dang it. All right, more trivia. All right. Uh, whose turn is it for a question? Mike's. I think it's Mike's turn. All right, Mike. What rock band's only beardless member is named Frank Beard? ZZ Top. That is correct. The Pride of oh. Dallas. Oh, yeah. Or what, Houston, right? Sorry. I would have got that wrong. Oh, yeah. Frank Beard, the guy without the beard. That's in so the band ironic. with the beards. <laughs> <laughs> Laying the irony on thick in that question. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Thank you for that question. All right. Now you, now you can win a prize. Oh, shoot. Okay. So I think I remember one in five. Oh. I There's one. Practice. There's five. And Mike's got our first match. All right. How, how now, you, how now the game should get a little easier. Keywords should. All right. So let's see here. Joe, right? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready to, ready to rock and roll. What gr which rock group is immortalized on Butthead's t-shirt? Uh, what? Both of them? It's, it's Metallica and ACDC, for sure. Which one is on Butthead's shirt? Oh, on Butthead's shirt? Crap. <sighs> you got a 50 50 shot now i know metallica oh not quite it was it was butthead era uh acdc wait beavis is wearing metallica yes gosh darn it who was wearing the winger shirt for the bonus yeah <laughs> who's what wearing the rat shirt <laughs> must right. pronounce both t's See, and I could cheat, but I'm not cheating. And everyone can tell because I'm not winning. All Maybe right. It's right in front of us, you know. <laughs> Beatles question for you, Mike. Um, in 1958, Paul McCartney invited which friend to watch the band play? Friend. Uh, uh, 1958? Yep. Um, I know I'll give you a hint. He later joined yep. the band. Oh, uh, Ringo. No. Oh. Joe, do you want to try a steal? Uh, you joined the Beatles? You joined the Beatles <laughs> and it's not Ringo? Uh, George Harrison. That is correct. Nice. Shot in the dark. Dang. And you want to pick a pair? Uh, yeah, let's go four and eight. Four and eight, as opposed to two. It's number four. And number eight. Joe, you have a pair as well. All tied up. Got a pair. Got a nice pair. All right. So let's go back to Mike. Uh, in January of 1959, John Lennon began studies at <laughs> which art institution? Ugh. John um, Lennon? Supposed uh, to know where he went to school? I think it'll be obvious once you hear the answer. Um, uh, Liverpool Art School Academy. <laughs> that is correct. It's the Liverpool <laughs> College of Art, but I will give there that one go. to you. I was okay. going to say, the born Liverpool. <laughs> uh, let's do GC. I'm supposed to remember this. Uh, oh, yeah, I got nothing for you on this. So no help. Let's go... Uh, Seven three. Ooh, seven. And three. 
Not quite. We got the round glasses and the and the Ray Bans. Yeah, right. Oh, now we know. Now, now we, know we know for sure. Uh, remember. That's if you get the question right, though. Right. All right. Let's see here. In January of 1960, Lennon's art school friend Stuart Sutcliffe joined the band, and he suggested changing the band's name to The Beatles as a tribute to who? The Beatles? The Beatles. As a tribute to who? Yep. Uh, Liverpool football team. <laughs> it, it, I'll give you a clue. It was a a very famous influential rocker at the time bob dylan not quite mike do you want to take a try leonard uh, nemo wait uh, i don't know elvis <laughs> uh, that one was buddy holly actually buddy holly oh B uh, buddy oh like beatles kind of the buddy well, i'm glad they take the beat alls <laughs> beat alls i'll beat all the uh yeah for the I got nothing. Right, um, let's see. Whose turn is it? It is Mike's turn. All right. To shine. Uh, who made his stage debut in a 1960 production of The Pajama Game? 1960? What? Yep. Pajama Game? Um, I remember that because I was 11. And I was watching the old Ed Sullivan show, and I believe it was uh, Paul McCartney. <laughs> nope. Joe, do you want to take a try? Six, 1960? <laughs> Is that the year we're talking about somebody yeah. doing a thing? These are supposed uh, to be the easy music trivia questions. I apologize on this possible. one. You know, I got <laughs> certain decades that are good for me. Not necessarily right now. Uh, I would say it's... Uh, it's a uh, Sonny Bono. Nope. Good guess though. Dang. <laughs> it was David Cassidy. David Cassidy. 1960. All the right. Beatles didn't even come to America for five more years. Nobody See, knew. Anything I didn't even about know anything. the exact yearage of that. <laughs> okay, topical. Who? Uh, let's see here. Mike's turn, right? Uh, I think it's yep. Joe's because I missed. Wait. No, I just wait. Oh yeah, no, it is mine. It is mine. I just tried to guess. Okay, that's right. Um, so a little, a little more topical on this one. What is the song on the backside of Prince's number one hit, 1999? You see, I grew up in Iowa, not Minneapolis. In the back of 1999. Uh I'm just gonna pick a song. I know some of his. I know a lot of songs that are by him. Uh, back in 1999, Little Red Corvette. That is correct. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Dang. Thank God. All right, let's go two seven six three, whichever one. There's Fine. two and seven. Ding 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 ding. And so, I mean, but we we know the other two match, right? That is correct. So we don't have to. Or so it seems. Or so. <laughs> That's what you thought would happen. But then it, it morphs into an even more complex guessing game. Well, I think we'll I think we'll have to call that one a tie then, huh? Oh yeah, we'll tie it up. That's ah, fine. Happy like to your, tie. Like Not a attitude. very competitive person. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> it's like, oh, we all win. That's perfect. <laughs> Less stress for me. Uh. So we're gonna watch a music video of yours, which I've seen a few times, and I, do, I know I think we featured it on the show, but not. I mean, it's been a couple years, I think, since we featured. I think we featured it. Maybe I don't remember when it came out, but it's think, bomb, bomb dignity when it came out, right? Yeah, I think we did it. I think we did this video during the Galactic Get Down preview show from 2018. 18, yeah, for yeah. sure. So it's high time we have we have it again. And uh, this is a video about coffee with starring coffee. I want to know what kind of coffee is that? What kind of coffee are you into, man? Well, I'm into the uh, the third wave single origin naturally processed, uh, you know, high highfalutin stuff. That stuff was, uh, I think those were a lot of old coffee beans. Cause they oh yeah, I suppose if you're just kind of throwing them about. Yeah, I was running them through the grinder, but I was also, you know, crunching them on the floor and throwing them around. <laughs> 
but you're not. So that's not the, the coffee you drink. The coffee no. you drink, I, I, I buy the good stuff. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a light roast, single origin, uh, you know, V60 pour over. I'm nice. deep in it. Yeah, yeah, I like how I like how specific that is. <laughs> Very incredibly, that's yeah. really cool. Um, so <laughs> so, uh, and if you want to see uh, the proof of Mike's love for coffee, just watch this video, Bomb Dignity. So basically, real simple. You can do it a cappella. My guest, that one guy, Mike Silverman's in the house. We had a wonderful game just now. I am reading the comments. Well, apparently, apparently, me having to remember where things are is very infuriating, uh, which is fair. I understand, everyone. No, Joe, it's not that one. We just saw it. It was the other one. I'm like, I know, I'm terrible. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about you though. Let's 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 figure all this out. Figure out exactly. 
Let's see what we got going on. Let's see. We were just saying you're you're in Vegas right now. Yep. Let's talk about Young Mike. Where did you yeah. grow up? What was it like there? And then my favorite question is who who or what or like what happened to get you into music first? Was there a moment or a, like an instructor or a parent? And go. Ah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Um, I start well. My dad uh, is a jazz bass player, an upright, upright bass jazz guy. Well, and, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And I was a super lucky little kid because uh, I grew up with an upright bass in the house, which is not a common thing. Most people maybe have a piano or a guitar or or nothing, <laughs> you know. And uh, and and I got really into jazz. I right. know it sounds crazy to be a little kid into jazz, but I. I was super into, you know, bebop and big band. My dad loves big band, and uh, and I, I learned, a su- yeah, yeah. I, le- I learned a super valuable lesson early on, which is everybody needs a bass player. And I did. He, he explained that to me because he was playing professionally before he even knew how to play. Because everybody needed a bass player, and they were hiring him, and he had a bass. And uh, and I was kind of in the same boat. Right. Like even in junior high, I was I was playing in like four different bands before I could find find the notes on the e string and and it was so cool to be in that situation where everybody's better than you you know and teaching <laughs> older than you and better than you and, and teaching you and uh, now now it's quite the opposite everybody's better <laughs> than me and better than me but keep going. <laughs> i don't know about that dude i mean thanks man i've seen i've seen i've seen a lot of people play music and you're you're pretty fucking good not gonna lie. It's, it's my thing <laughs> it's my <laughs> thing you know I dabble. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. So you started playing. You started playing bass. Dad played bass. I I played. I mean, I played bass second. I played drums first, then I played mm. bass. But that rhythm section is kind of what I'm all about. Amen. And then, uh, so how do you go from that playing bass, listening to jazz as a kid, to completely inventing your own instrument? Like, was the magic pipe an idea for a long time? Was it out of necessity? How how and what and where? Like, what was the process between? It's all three of those things. I, uh, I, I, there was a long period of me playing professionally as a bass, kind of a sideman for hire, bass player guy. Uh, and I was in the Bay, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, which had a super vibrant, um, vibrant, vibrant, uh, uh, jazz, new jazz, art, art rock, new art rock, post dad rock scene i was part of all of it and uh and, and again i was playing 10 gigs a week because everybody needed a bass player and there was probably like three of us that were all sharing gigs together and and i had my my main band and i had all these kind of side projects and i was doing lots of studio work all kinds of real fun things that were just completely uh, edu- educate me on uh, on the world of, of, of music and bass and everything and my one man band was this weird thing i had kind of dreamed up and as you as you could guess being a bass player drummer if you want to start a one-man band that's a tough one you know like what do you do it's hard to uh, accompany yourself as a solo artist on the bass or the drums although i mean that's what well, that's what i'm doing but i had to kind of figure it out right and the, the the magic pipe was the answer for me it was like let's 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 invent an instrument that's still a bass still a percussion thing but can be melodic and can allow me to to be a one-man band i mean as simple as that and, and the idea sat in my head for a good three years before i set aside a full year to try to build it because i have no background in, in in building anything i i didn't even have any tools at the time uh, so it took me a couple months of going to the home depot every day and just walking <laughs> up and down the aisles and just looking wow. at stuff i'd be like that could be a bridge oh that could be a a tuning headstock mechanism yep. and i needed to move around in a fun way so you need like 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 gaskets and gears and you know everything like, everything, like, everything. And, and all that was a, all that was an accident too you know i just started piecing it together That's <laughs> it, cool. just, it was moving around and and, and uh, to me to me it's always been kind of akin to like i mean it's not but it has the same sort of like over the head like all-encompassing vibe of that old school like one man band where he'd walk and it would hit the drum and you know like you know he'd like move his arm like this and it would clap you know and like he'd play guitar and like the one man band with the whole the stuff on him you know what i mean you kind of like cover yourself in it so it's kind absolutely. of absolutely like no that's futuristic that's, like that's it that was what that. i was going for you know future <laughs> a futuristic uh dick van dyke from mary poppins yeah you know, that that's was, 
that was my vat. That was totally the vibe. And and actually, uh, the 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 bass, the instrument itself, having initially one string on it, it was kind of inspired by the old gut buckets, you mm-hmm. know, the old gut bucket or diddly bow. Uh, sort of <laughs> diddly string. bow. You ever heard of diddly bow? I've never heard the word or term diddly bow. Oh man, so it's uh it's an uh, it's an old school weird blues technique slash instrument where you take a single string and you nail it to the side of your house and you, and you put <laughs> the other you, you, i swear to god and you put the <laughs> other side of it on your porch and then you take a big old bottle or something that can be a slide if you will and you and you wail away with a stick or something on this thing and it's like a giant one string house resonating Holy yeah cow. some guy i i remember touring and somebody told me about it some some uh, guitar player Dude, from the south and He's like, that's like a diddly bow. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and he explained it to me. I'm like, guys, there's no way that's real. And I looked it up and sure enough. And yeah, it's Bo like, Diddley, <laughs> Bo Diddley, I think uh, got his name from the diddly bow. Yeah, I, I think. I, I don't know yeah. exactly how that uh, came know. around, but there's a there's a very rich uh, tradition in the blues, the old blues world of one string. Waka, 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 well, when waka, you're playing waka, on the you know? porch, you know. Yeah, if you're going to play, if the porch is your gig, if the porch like, is your Like, what should instrument. I play? How about the house? <laughs> pretty much that's what this feels like at times <laughs> pretty much <laughs> carrying my house around with me everywhere i go yeah it's, that's it's pretty funny. ridiculous it's yeah. your little house inside your little or house uh <laughs> let's see so um but speaking of magic and pipes uh let's see magic is a thing you also do so you are a musician and a magician yes. as well so i like how john wore this what came first the magic or the pipe uh the the, the instrument and the music came first uh, magic came first. believe it or not uh was a little later uh I've, although I've been doing it forever at this point, I've been doing it for a long, long time, but I didn't get into magic, slide of hand, all that kind of stuff until I was a grown up. Uh, as a kid, I didn't like that stuff. It, it never captivated me or I never found it interesting, but I, I, I know now why is because when I was a kid, I never saw a good magic. You know, I was always, you know, my uncle telling me to pick a card and I just, I, I could care less, you know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I, I, uh, I started going to Vegas a lot at the end of my tours. I would tour the, the country for three months and on the way back to San Francisco Bay Area, I'd always stop in Vegas and I'd spend like three or four days there and go to like every single magic show. I was just so into it and I just kind of fell in love with it and I accidentally kind of met my mentor and teacher there mm. who's truly one of the greats in the world and he was the first magician I saw perform that made it look like this beautiful performance art um, kind of presentation and, and and all the all his routines are very composed and beautiful and interesting and I, I remember thinking wow this is like music this is very intricate and interesting and pretty you know and uh, that's what made me want to get get into it and it's been a beautiful uh, study for me because I've kind of rediscovered you know tons of stuff about my music right and you find it's it's nice to have like that 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 just additional like set of like skilled just kind of bust out i mean like because there are times it shows where you'll you'll you seem to do more like i don't know i don't know if if it's more magic than others or it's just been years and years of sets and you just improving upon your magic but like it's always been something people talk about after a show you know what i mean is the man the magic part too oh thanks yeah i you know it's um you know when i started studying you know what sleight of hand really is and how it all works with misdirection and conditioning and all these different ideas and theories that are so just interesting you know i said interesting twice but like the psychology of it is 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 what's also interesting and fascinating that's true and um and uh i i sort of realized i had been doing a lot of that already you know with the way i kind of play with my feet and the yeah. way i produce sounds and the way i layer sounds and there's a lot to it that reminiscent of, of of just kind of classic sleight of hand and when i when i started shoehorning in my magic tricks into the show it it almost felt like they were always there and it, and it mm. always felt like uh love that it just feels like a natural kind of fit but you know when you're a one-man band that's another fun thing about it is you can just do whatever you want and it doesn't uh it doesn't really matter you don't have to run it by your your committee you can just start doing magic tricks in the middle of the show and and if the audience doesn't like it well Go see another one man band. Man. Right, yeah. There's tons of shows. <laughs> tons of shows without magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just if, that, if that's if that's the line for you. Like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm gonna spray paint that on the side um, of my band. And I know we've enjoyed your magical self at Galactic Get Down years two, three, and four. What was your experience like at Galactic Get Down? How did what did you how was it? Oh man, I loved it. Uh the first one. 
uh, was 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 kind of my favorite still. I uh, I agree. I, there was something so magical about that. I think I like your new site a lot better, and I think you know the growth of the festival is 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 undeniably awesome and, and yeah. better all the way around infrastructure wise. Um, something about I just I think it was just the way I played that night and the way everything sounded and and ev- and the way the lights and the visuals. The, the excitement was like palpable. You know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah, like you was, were like like you were like this extra special you know like you're not from in you know you're not from minnesota you're not from south dakota like you're from farther away and you know you've been playing with like the the wookie foot crew and people that we've known for a long time so like have kind of have you as our own like awesome surprise act was like i mean i know i was super stoked i know that that whole night was like the night itself i remember was perfect the temperature was perfect yeah, everything you know what i mean every like the sky was clear like it was a dope dope night that was it was it was amazing it was one of my favorite shows honestly it was one of my favorite nights and it felt you know whenever i uh, over the summer i fly a lot for festivals and i have to figure out a way to fly with all my stuff and it's always it always makes everything feel more unpredictable and i never (laughs) it's it's always i never know how the shows are ever going to go because things are always just kind of in cases and in pieces and, and and and, and when when everything comes together, it just feels magical. That was still one of my favorite shows I ever I've ever played. Actually, I really that really means played. a lot to us. That means a lot. Hell yeah, I that's mean cool. Because that was that was a magical moment. It was just one of those times we had done it once before, but we were trying to do a bigger thing, and it was like, we can do this. There are people here. They want they want us to they want to attend our event. You know what I mean? And that was just the beginning of what's come to be a really cool part of the community up here and then Amen. i have so many crystal more and i were were talking about this exact topic last night too and then like i was i've just rewired my whole office and i have all of my hard drives hooked back up and i've been kind of going through some old video and and i was going through a little bit of old video from that year specifically last night and it was just like i had a hard time stopping myself because it was just like Everywhere where I'd go throughout the video, it's like, oh, this was magic. Oh, this was magic too. It was oh, nonstop. This, like, like, and and I going back to what you were just saying, Joe. Like, there was something about like we had learned so much from the first year and had all this confidence and and really how to like make that property work and and it just everything worked out great. And not to take away from the new property at all. I mean, I think. I think year two last year at Outback would have been, you know, just as good had it not been for the dramatic weather. Um, you know, yeah. we still did a fantastic job, but there was something about about that first year that you were there with us, Mike, with, with our second year that of that festival that it was it was something else for sure. And, and I, I think it's still probably why we get a lot of the talk that we do because it was a really magic weekend. Yeah, right. it sure was. And then, yeah, okay, now, okay, it was magical, and I'm going to start, I'm getting, I don't need to get all, all clamped over here, <laughs> but you've, uh, you've been hosting Radio One Guy, Radio One Guy, for <laughs> right. 148 episodes now, John said, I, uh, wow, I think so, yeah. what has your experience been? Uh, similar to ours, or I mean, like, you know, I guess, I mean, like, I guess we can kind of relate is what I'm trying to say. Uh, what has it been like creating, producing and maintaining a regularly aired weekly broadcast? Oh my God. It's so hard. It's so difficult. <laughs> um, um, you know, uh, it's fun as hell. I've been wanting to do that thing for 10 years. I've been, wa- I wanted to do a podcast initially cause I'm a huge fan of the medium of podcasting same and and i kept trying it and it was so bad like i I tried to record (laughs) something and i was like it was like i was trying to make an album which i can't do it takes me five out five years to make records because i'm always remixing and fixing and you know just got that perfectionist thing that keeps us from making anything good basically (laughs) and uh you know when i play live you can't do any of that you just gotta play and you it, right. it forces you not to be that guy not to be that over over analytical dude you can just play and if it's good it's good if it's not it's not you, it's not you try to make it better the next time and when i try when i figured out the the live thing i was like this solves all my issues you know i don't i, I can plan things but if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't um i could jump into it and something about knowing you're gonna do it on this particular day at this particular time also solves a lot of problems because I'm never the type of person that feels ready or prepared or that I have my act together. So <laughs> no, it's like, well, Always, I got to never. 
Yeah, none of us do. And I think that's a natural thing for all of us. It's that's part of the process. And it's like, well, either way, I'm going to go live on Monday at 5 p.m. <laughs> Pacific, you know, and like and I probably yeah. start 30 minutes late or whatever because everything doesn't work and everything's a mess. <laughs> but um, all that matters to me is that I actually do it, even if I'm some some nights I'm seven hours late. There, I mean, I, not so much anymore, but the, the, the whole right. first year I would I would yeah. try to start at five and I would start at three in the morning, literally because I didn't know, <laughs> you know, and. You know, and 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 people still seem to appreciate that I was even uh, not, you know, that, that I wasn't giving up, and I was just. Doing I think it. so. I mean, I definitely appreciate you know your show and then Heatbox's show inspired us to do this show or me oh, to nice. me to start the show, and then of course John was inspired and then took it to the whole new level. But like, uh, one thing I do tell a lot of people are starting these live stream shows, these things they're starting to do programming on their own. And one right. thing I tell people right away when they talk to me about it is like, no one knows what they're doing. No one just, it's not, it's not like there's a team of people waiting at the live stream gates being like, that's good. You can do that. Yep. You can do that. Like no one, you, you can just do whatever you want. Do your best. No one knows what's going on. You know, it's like, don't worry about all that so much. Just make sure it's like a genuine experience and something you enjoy doing. Just, you got to start doing it and you got to do it all the time and you got to yeah. do it for a couple of years. You too. It's, it's, it's just like playing gigs. It's just like music. It's just like anything. And, uh, mm -hmm. You have to be pretty bad at it for a really long time. <laughs> and here's, uh, and, here's know, something that, that most people don't know, but when Joe and I first got the Smoke and Joe show started, uh, Heatbox had told Joe to go download this OBS program and it'll help you guys get the show rolling. And so Joe got a couple episodes going and, and I instantly became interested and Joe was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff. Go download OBS. And I downloaded OBS and I found out at that same time that you were running Radio 1 guy using that program. And so most people don't know, but like a lot of this stuff that I learned, I, I learned from you, Mike, just from calling you up and being like, how do I do this stuff? So it, it, it's, it's all really come full big circle, circle today. <laughs> for sure. ha happy to help, brother man. Yeah, man. So you're, the only reason you're on our show is because you helped us make our show. Hey, we, we're all in this together, my friend. Yes, we are. So we appreciate you. Oh, so much. It's, it's um, my pleasure. It's my pleasure. What are you What are you doing now with your time? What are you going to do when you're done? And then, is there anything words of wisdom for the folks at home during this particular, you know, quarantine, lockdown, semi? released i don't know what's going on go on yeah i hear you brother uh okay, let me start with what am i doing what are you doing i'm doing this um ironically <laughs> um uh you know a few people have said this we were talking about this earlier uh this is what i would be doing anyway uh my my sort of yearly cycle is i tour really really hard between january and may i, I basically don't come home at all mm -hmm. and uh I, I do seven nights a week pretty much and then i come home in may and i usually shut down that and i just get into this and i usually stay in my cave the rest of the year <laughs> and uh and that you know that that means getting out and running out and doing festivals of course but that's usually uh, i go out and i come back and uh and so my daily routine is i stay inside and i work on stuff i work on music and i work on this and uh and so that's normally what i would be doing and yet um you know when this first started I had zero juice, you know, I have a list of, I have a list of lists of lists of things to do that I need to do that I want to do that I should be doing. <laughs> and, uh, and I couldn't do any of it. I was just like, Ugh, you know, and then it was just that unknown mm -hmm. theory thing that I think probably most of us were vibing on. And uh, it took me a few weeks to realize, wow, that's it's all that's in my head. It's just all in my head because I'm still just in this space. <laughs> I right. still have all my stuff. I mean, this part of my world hasn't changed at all. I just, I should, I should probably uh, be a human and do my thing, what I normally would do, you know? And of course that's easier said than done. Cause I, I need to have my inspiration or my excitement about life uh, to right. do that. And so that took that's taken a little bit to get back. And I heard you say earlier when you opened the show that, you know, this week for you has been a big week of actually writing music and doing that again. And and that's that's been the same with me. I think this last yeah. week for me is suddenly I'm I feel like I'm kind of my old self again and uh, I'm learning to kind of let go of things. And so it's all coming together. Uh, I, my plan is just to uh, to go as hard as I can 
with um, with with my broadcast and with my new material and not because <laughs> not because I just want to do this because I don't buy into the new normal thing I think you know I, I my opinion is that in about a year we'll all probably forgot we'll have all forgotten that any of this has even happened and that's my hope of course um, I think we won't have completely have forgotten we'll probably talk about it a little bit right. it'll we'll, it'll be a point in time that yeah, is it'll passed. Be, it'll be right. that that yeah. thing that happened it'll be like 9 11 that's the thing that happened a long time ago and where were you when the blah 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 you yep. know it'll be a lot of that um but of course uh for the foreseeable future me i was at home months, yeah i was at home <laughs> what were you doing i was at home <laughs> yeah like that's you know i was in the middle of the tour uh, when this whole thing got called or, or when all of our lives got called off temporarily and uh, right you know i thought my story was so unique and I drove home <laughs> and, uh, and everyone's like yeah me too yeah me too yeah i was i was doing all this imp- stuff that i really like to do and i went home yeah um so that's pretty much everybody but um yeah uh uh i, I don't know I'm, i i i actually i initially i'm always excited to have a little more time to work uh on things um but then again i always like working best when um when i know everybody else is okay you know i don't know it's, it's, i i never thought of myself as is is that empathetic i was i was always like i just want to be in my cave i don't want to i just want to do my thing i don't i don't need to see anybody and then right. uh I, I couldn't believe how just even a couple days into it i was just losing my mind because i didn't realize how important even just going to the coffee shop and and saying hi to the to my buddy exactly. that works there just, yeah i like, found that huge. my social my social life revolved around gathering in large groups that was like my whole life sure and it's like oh okay so what do I do? I don't know. They, they let us out. I don't even know what to go do. I mean, I like to go outside, of course. I enjoy nature and all that. And, you know, that's one of, but at the same time, you know, I also love being around a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think once everybody is it'll a little happen. less scared, it'll, it'll of course happen. Yeah. And it'll be a process. And I want, I want yeah. to feel safe. I want to make other people safe. I don't want to force people to make decisions that they might not be comfortable making, especially being an event promoter. You know, that's right. a really got to be really careful with how you, you know, influence our community and what, and you know, what we really like, where we want to stand. I hear you. I, I mean, literally my second to last gig is, was when all the, the information started coming down and I was like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like I felt all weird. I couldn't get out of my head mm. and I was going back and forth about it. I was like, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to play, you know, I had, and I, and I still didn't know nobody knew anything. Right. And my last gig was in Roanoke, Virginia at this really cool little space, this beautiful little space. And they had, they had put out chairs and they put them all six feet apart. And they had like, they had really um, kind of planned it and thought about it. And, and I was going, oh, this is kind of cool. And actually I really enjoyed the gig because I felt, I felt uh, like I wasn't uh, doing the wrong thing, even though I don't know what the right thing was and is. Right. And I don't think anybody still does, but, no. but it felt a little bit better. And I still knew as I was playing, I was like, this is my, this is my last gig for, for a while. This is totally yeah. the last gig. <laughs> I could, I just could tell. And the week, sure enough, by the next the day, everything before was... everything started shutting down, me and a bunch of friends drove down to Chicago to see uh, goose and pigeons playing ping pong. And uh-huh. it was, it was the same thing there. Like I, like I've very rarely been in a venue that was as crowded as that venue was that night. And then everywhere while you were there, there were signs up all over the walls that were like, wash your hands often and try not to contact each other. And it was like, you couldn't move through this place without like knocking people over. And you could tell everybody there was just like, yeah, this is gonna be it. This is it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, it's weird. And it's again, this is all in my head, but I was driving. I had to drive all the way from Richmond, Virginia, back to Vegas, you know, coast to coast. And I was already like, I went way into panic mode. I was all by myself. I dropped off the mind bender in, in Cleveland on the way. I was just like, and on the way to Cleveland, I stopped at all my coffee shops. I stopped and we stopped to eat, stopped to do all the stuff. And then the minute I was done uh, dropping him off and I was going to drive back, I was like, I was like, oh God, I can't go to coffee. I can't go out to eat. I can't see anybody. I can't touch anybody else. I can't. And I was pumping gas and wiping my hand. I was like, I got super paranoid about everything. And uh, it, 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 it just goes to show you, like you go you go to that place in your head and it's like, well, what's different today than yesterday? It shouldn't be any different. And, um, and I think 
you know, if, if, if we're all like that going forward and it's like, oh God, I, I mean, I want to go to a show, but I don't want to be around people. And it's like, we're, it's, we're just going to have to um, get over it, just get over that, get over our fear and understand, you know, what it really is. And you look at, you look at countries yeah. that have gone through this a bunch of times, like every time they have a pandemic in, in Japan or China and, you know, people wear the masks and they wear the masks to keep from transmitting. It's not the, it's not to be in an isolation state of isolation not catch anything it's it's if you if you're right. sick you wear the mask so you don't cough on stuff that's it's just that simple and easy and kind of kind of kind of kind of basic and uh and and so that's why people wear masks when they're sick so maybe that would be that'll be people start to understand what it all actually means it's like okay right. and sick. i mean if we're gonna keep growing as a race we're gonna have to understand you know that things do will change i mean we can make adjustments as we go but i mean there's yeah. not really a smooth transition through history i mean it, 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 it's just you know, things change and sometimes dramatically and sometimes, you know, you incorporate things into your daily life you didn't before. And that's kind of what's Absolutely. happening. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I've been reading up on the Spanish flu and stuff and, you know, it came and went. I mean, it, it took a while. Uh, it was yeah. about a year or and, something or a little more, but but it literally and it was way worse. It was apparently it was way worse than this. Um, and um, and it came and then it literally went and they didn't have any of the medical technology they have now they didn't have any of the information we have now nobody was communicating nobody was saying anything because you couldn't and so by the time everybody was locked down um it was kind of right. too late right. but then it kind of ran its course as these things do you know so uh it, it is what it is and then and then we, we move past it and we yeah, it's on to the uh, it's on to the murder hornets which onto I'm the murder excited, hornets although i hear they're delicious so we're just yeah. gonna eat them well, luckily for me, um, back in January, I was stung really bad by this big weird bee. So I'm pretty sure I've already had the murder hornets. You already had them. Yeah. <laughs> You're immune to the murder hornets. I feel bad for you guys, but I'm I'm good. I'm pretty good. <laughs> I can go wherever I want now. Yeah. Funny. Uh, uh, so uh, that's good. That's good for me. Anything you'd like to add before we do? Uh, we're gonna segue into what is it? Our first ever live magic performance. Is that what's happening right now? Oh, true. Um. I can't think of anything specifically, but I, I do enjoy talking to you. So if you want, yeah, no, this has been keep great. gabbing. I'm down. You know, yeah, we don't have we don't have we don't have any like schedule or like thing we right. have to do. When's our first I, station ID or network break or? Uh... I I yeah, gave up like, on that stuff when I gave up on my radio station paycheck. <laughs> to say yeah, if somebody wants to you know sponsor us, we will take breaks and say your name. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> like also, <laughs> this whole thing brought to you by. Just things that we like and know together. Yeah. It's Don't brought you to you by me. Me. <laughs> me and my friends. <laughs> There's a name for it that sounds fancy. <laughs> brought to you by Get Down Enterprises. <laughs> but that's just me <laughs> and my friends. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I can't. I can't necessarily do a magic trick but i could do a knock knock joke if, if let's if do you, a knock knock joke is, is that okay that's okay. totally fine you can right, do anything is... you want you have you can do any sort of performance you'd like okay okay so uh okay this is a knock knock joke i'm gonna go slow because there's a little bit of the delay with the obs and everything and i want that i want the audience to uh to, uh, to yeah. respond i want to be a call and response knock knock joke with the audience so it goes like this it goes knock knock That's who's there, I think. Yep. Banana. And then you say, Banana who? Banana who? And then I say, Oh. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, did it work? Okay, good, good, good. Okay, now that we know now that we know the rules. Now we know the rules. Uh, we can try it again. Let's do it one more time. All right. All right. Knock knock. Who's there, they say. Who's there, they say. I hear him saying it. Yep. I hear him oh. too. I hear it echoing through the space-time continuum. Orange. Orange who? Orange who? Aren't you glad I didn't pull another banana out of my beard? Oh! <laughs> there you go. Thank I you mean, guys. I, I, was, I kind of thought maybe you had oranges too. <laughs> You know, I've it's it's I've learned, you know, I've learned a lot of important lessons. And one of the biggest ones is when life gives you lemons, 
pull them out of your beard and get on with your life. <laughs> and don't drink lemonade. It's bad for your teeth. Oh! <laughs> Just get them out of there. Just get them I, out of there. Get yeah, on I'm with your life. I'm pulling lemons out of my beard that it's very little and you can't see. <laughs> very little lemons. So. I, uh, yeah, I got, I, I recently have been getting really into apples. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know why, but the sweet tango yeah, apples. Too as advertised by Mark Marin on Mark Marin's pad podcast uh -huh. are amazing. I would like to say that I'm not getting paid by sweet tango apples, but they are really good. Dude, no, me too. I, I never was an apple guy. You know, it's funny for mostly why I, I, I cause I thought they had germs on them because you know, it wasn't <laughs> underneath the peel. And now all I eat is apples and I wash, them. I wash them and I'm, I'm just, I'm getting over myself and, and I'm loving the apples. I'm with you, brother. Yeah. And there's so many kinds. There's so many kinds. Oh. There's, golden delicious they're still making them up there's like a sweet. galaxy apple that looks like space sweet granny smith or whatever that's called yeah, yeah i hear macintosh you. macintosh yeah. that's um, it you know you got you know the iphone yeah i was gonna say the imac <laughs> yeah i love those they're delicious the imacs have a lot of germs on them though wash those off yeah you gotta make sure you make an imac murder, murder hornet puree <laughs> <laughs> delicious <laughs> amen Ooh, uh, man, Jess says that her great grandpa helped create the Honeycrisp. No way. Aww. Yeah. Someone made a wow face, too. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, we got some people contesting it, but I'm going to go ahead and agree that you wouldn't just say that. You know? It's not going to say. Actually, I might just say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's we something. do have a game on the show, which is like two truths and a lie where like we, you know, we try, we have, you know, two different statements. One's true, one's a lie, but the people don't know. And then your, your guests will pick it, pick one of them. And you have to like explain either the truth or the lie and they can ask you questions. Did I ever tell um, you that my grandfather invented the diddly bow? It's a true story. <laughs> but, but by knowing what a diddly bow is, that is, that's, that sits well. That's, yeah. that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna milk this one. I like it. I like it. Diddly, diddly bow. You know, but you know, like you know, Nick, what Bo Diddley named himself after? Oh, you don't know about the Diddley bow, the house harp. <laughs> <laughs> get your bottle. Harp. Get a string and a stake. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. What else do you got going on? What is? What are you listening to right now? Ooh, what am I listening to? Um. Yeah. You know, I'm still listening to a lot of podcasts and comedy and uh, mm. YouTube. Uh, I don't get paid anything for this, but YouTube premium. Ooh, la, la. Um, it's like 10 bucks or actually maybe it's gotten more expensive now, but you don't get any commercials. So you can just let it play in the background so I can turn my phone off and just let it play like it's my radio station. That's what I right. listen to. Uh, I'm still old school with the music. You know, I like my Frank Zappa and my Captain mm. Beefheart and my... Mm. Miles Davis and John Coltrane. These are a few of my favorite things. And um, <laughs> like, uh, what, yeah, a lot of pro a lot of proggy stuff, a lot of weird time signatures and yeah, and, I like and grand I like, ideas. <laughs> I, like the, I like when things are needlessly complicated. That's kind of my, <laughs> so complicated. That's dude. kind of my yeah. jam. <laughs> yeah, that's and, cool, um, though. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I like it. I like it. Actually, I just saw this crazy Frank Zappa interview that they did in this in the late 60s in it um in australia and, and all they would ever do is is question him about like sort of the political nature of his music which it wasn't at all but like he was such a he was such a, a firebrand and they would always kind of grill him on free speech and all these issues of the day and it's so funny how complicated and unbelievable his music was and no one would ever mention that like no one would ever mention that they would always go right to the to the kind of uh, combative stuff but uh but he but he was so funny he was such a funny guy to to interview and he always had such insightful awesome kind of confrontational things and ways ways to ways to present his uh, his point of view it was really fun. It was really fun. I always love listening to. It. So I, yeah, I listened to a lot of Frank Zappa interviews. That's nice. <laughs> so, yeah, before yeah. I started doing this, I like studied the different uh, talk show, like late night talk show hosts, you know, to mm -hmm. try and see like, okay, what am I gonna base like? What's my style? Because sure. they all have different styles, you know. It's like I don't want. I'm not gonna copy someone, but you kind of got to be like, what's the range? Sure. Of like talk show host, you Who's know. And I found I I really Letterman's my favorite interviewer. Ah, best. Best of the best. Like that, you know, studying him, asking people questions. You're like, wow, 
after doing it once or twice and then watching him, you realize that's a skill. That is a hardcore skill. Like this is amazing what he does, how he how he talks to people, how he gets people to say things about themselves they might not even thought of. You know, I don't know. It's yeah. just nuts. And then Jimmy Fallon's my game guy. Here's another yeah. interesting vicarious visions fact. David Letterman's the reason why I went to broadcasting school was because yeah, so I Letterman. was I was so obsessed with David Letterman as a as a kid and I knew that he was a DJ before he was a TV show host was where he learned his interview skills and so I was like I'm going to do the same thing because I like that was my goal as a as a late teen early 20 something was to be the next David Letterman and so now here we find ourselves where I'm producing a weekly talk show again it's he funny a- how things come full circle he was yeah. a DJ. I didn't know that. He was a DJ before he was a comedian because he did stand up all through the early '80s, late '70s. So what? That's what something. A deadly have you ever combination. done stand up? Like a DJ and a comedian, because not too many of those guys. Yeah, he definitely has that DJ delivery. I never thought about that. That's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, he was have you ever done stand up, Mike? Have you ever thought of? Yeah, I've thought about it. I mean, comedy to me is kind of everything. I I think stand-up comedy is a beautiful art form. Just comedy in general to me is the most important thing in 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 as part of the human condition. (laughs) The ability to laugh and the the ability to understand irony and and the and (laughs) especially the idea of communicating an idea um, with uh, in a humorous way to make people understand and laugh is so deep. Such a deep, interesting idea. I, I like to flirt with comedy when i do my live shows you know, Same. Live, you know and the funnest part of course about being a musician trying to be a comedian is you don't have to be a comedian so there's no pressure and you get yeah, up if there your and joke you, doesn't work just play your stupid song play your <laughs> stupid music <laughs> yeah exactly and and you know it's it's so fun because i do that thing that a lot of comedians well i hear a lot of comedians discussing which is like you know stumble on an idea at a gig like an idea that you just just came to you and people laugh and you make them laugh and then you try it again the next night and they don't laugh at all yep. and then you try it again and you try to refine it and you try to understand what it was in that initial idea that connected you know to the audience you keep trying keep trying and like working out a bit and finding the beats yep. and the rhythm and the and the idea and the bits and it's just like music and it's just like magic you know when i talk about these magic tricks with my teacher and there's it, it's timing and rhythm is such a huge part of it Un, uh, showing the audience what you're going to do what you're about to do without showing them what you're about to do right you know like telegraphing telegraphing an idea you know you say like you you play a song about rainbows and then you say things between the song like rainbows on demand you know and then <laughs> the next thing you do is you you just pull them out of your beard oh <laughs> No, you you get what I'm saying. Yeah, comedy. That's, What's that really, doing there? <laughs> I got a lot of stuff in there. I got a lot yeah, of Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's been a long been a long couple months, you know. You got time to grow it out as long as you possibly can. Not that you were considering cutting it all off. I don't really know. My, you know my what's funny? Player stays I, the same. I hate to say this out loud, <laughs> but uh last year was such a gnarly year uh, for me. Not, nothing too traumatic happened, but um other than you know normal life stuff but then i didn't i never went home i stayed on i literally stayed on the road all year and right before this tour started i was kind of saying under my breath wow i'd love to take a year off i remember actually (laughs) saying that to myself and of course taking a year off would mean working on all this stuff but um i wanted to and i i would never do that i i would never take a year off because uh i can't afford to you know you got to get out there and work this is what we do and uh but when you have to it's like well i guess i'll just take a year off and just make it make it work and and um, yeah. and and so, you know, uh, like I was saying, if I could get out of my head and and actually make make the use of the time, you know, and uh, easier said than done, but um, right. But, but yeah, I, I like I like having the elbow room, but I, I really like it's weird. I watch videos even from like March of of my tour <laughs> when I was playing live, and it's just like oh, I just start to weep because it looks so much fun. It's like I, I want to play a gig. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to play a concert in my living room. I want to, I want to play, right. I want to play a real show through a it's, PA. Yeah. It's just, ugh, you it's, know, I hate yeah. not doing that. I just hate not doing that so much. I get so much energy from the, from all the people I see every day, you know, and, and, and it helps me establish in my mind, like what's happening with yeah. me, you know? So like when, uh, you know, cause I, I, I have no idea what's going on it's been months since i've seen everyone you know and, and everyone is such a relative term you know what i mean like I yeah don't know what, i don't know how many people need i need to see for it to be everyone you know, you know? It's, it's 
funny because that's I, what I learned is it's not as many as you think. You know, for me, yeah, going to the coffee shop for five minutes was actually this beautiful dose of humanity, and I, I took it for granted. I, I, I really did. I would go there, hang out, it's a lesson talk, for you know, sure talk for shop a little bit, run into everybody that I know in my little neighborhood there, and then go home. And uh, and I usually couldn't. By the time I was hanging there for a few minutes, I couldn't wait to jump back home and jump into my little world and do my thing. But then if I don't even get that at all, I just I'm just like dying for it. I'm craving it. I'm craving connection. And I'm craving like high fiving friends and hugging friends and stuff. And yeah. you know, as we all are, and it's just a little bit. I don't need to like walk around all day long and hug everybody. I just wanna <laughs> I just wanna hug a few people. You know, yeah, but eventually everybody. I, I can only go to Harmony Park a few times a year and endure days and days of nonstop hugs. It's intense. I you know I'm sure everybody <laughs> would say that. You know, everybody that goes to a festival that gets to get to get gets to get immersed in that kind of humanity mm. it's so much fun and it's so intense and it's so soul nourishing and then you always, you always need a week to recover when you when you yeah. come back home from that you're like wow i need to like be in my own thoughts for a yeah, minute no one kind talk of, to me or yeah process me i want to or you just want to process yeah everything that that kind of happened and i'm that way on the road every night i get to be around so many people and it's so positive and so beautiful and by the time I'm driving to wherever I'm staying, I'm just like, you know, my brain is usually melting out of my ears. And I'm like, and I can't even, I got nothing to say to even myself. You know, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like all out of words. I can't, I can't articulate an idea. And I need, I need a full night's sleep to get back to that place the next day where I'm sleep like, okay, will do well, I'm ready, it. To, ready to communicate again. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's good that you've gotten to that point. I mean, I don't know if you've always been like that, but I find myself at the, I mean, just like the longer I do it, the more, the more I kind of, it's like, I know it's going to happen. I don't stay out late as late as often. I still do, but like not as, not as much, obviously not at all right now, but, but you know, cause that if you're playing every day a week, you can't, you can't skip any time of rest that you have. Like it's no, no, it's impossible. Is, everything is magnified. Every meal is an opportunity to eat. <laughs> You know, every, every <laughs> yeah. minute to sleep is an opportunity to just to recharge. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about it. I love that every day on the road is like a week. You know, I feel like you're you're, you're you get to hyper live your life. Um, and I, I love that feeling. I, I really, I truly agree. do, because when I'm home, I feel like I waste a lot of time and I'm real hard on myself about that. And so when I get out on the road, I feel like I can make up for everything by just throwing myself into it a thousand percent. And, and it I get feels, that for sure. It feels, it feels good. Yeah, it's like you can't help but be be a productive musician when like what you're doing is 100 percent for the music. You know what I mean? Totally. Your whole day. It's like totally. you're waking up, you're driving, you're flying, you're carrying, you're setting up, you're chatting, you're playing, you're chatting, you're and then you get sleep. And then, yep. <laughs> and then you know, yeah, it's a it's a crazy thing. And I miss it very much. Oh, I can't wait, much. dude! My new band, <laughs> Iron Star, was like where we played eight shows before the lockdown happened. And it was like we had all this stuff set up for the summer just like good lord and i, I was like because i've been i've been a little bit light on my touring schedule and i was hoping to get more into it but i'm a patient man I yeah mean, well you know what it, it, for you know this time always flies by for me that's the funny thing too is when i normally get home from this i i'm so measured with the months because i'm i, I want to milk milk it i want to enjoy the summer and just hang out and work on stuff and drink coffee and that kind of thing and the time just flies by and now I'm like, when's it gonna end? When's it gonna end? But yeah, uh, you know, we'll get there. We'll get uh, there. I'll we're, find we're something else to complain about once it. Uh, oh, I can't wait. I'm yeah. real good at complaining. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, just find something. Yeah, just Seinfeld it out. And that, that, when we were talking about rhythm, I, I can, I always talk about Seinfeld with comedy and music being the the guy that made the theme. He like changed it every episode based on the rhythm of mm. Jerry's stand up in the show. Don't but the bump bump bump. What's the deal with murder hornets? Yeah, what are they doing here? They eat the bees. <laughs> we need the bees, I Jerry. I know we need the bees. <laughs> nice. It's like Kramer can Kramer can just you know Kramer can just make me laugh just by walking in a door. I think that's one of the biggest things oh, yeah. about that show. That's... It's like just you know, and I know that actor's gotten some flack, and you know I'm not like defending his whatever whatever but goddamn that character is great he had a rough night that night no doubt about it but if you know what one of his best performances ever is uh in weird owls uhf, UHF with, with stanley spadowski and yeah. his 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 speech about the mop if that yeah. doesn't bring a tear to your eye <laughs> you're not a human being i agree i agree with that uhf if you haven't seen it weird owls movie uhf <laughs> classic gotta watch it well i think i think that's about about what i got john what do you got how you feeling? People are that's, still here. Yeah, that's what I got. I mean, 
Yeah, it, it's a great <laughs> conversation. I, I sure am not one to deter the conversation, and people we can are do it again sometime. Us, we don't have to, you know. Th- we can we can cut it cut it now if we've talked everybody's ears off. We can. I'll come back again, and we'll just keep going, brother. You're oh, welcome yeah. to come back any 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 time. I'm a and, I'm a know, I'm a world class talker. I can talk all we, day all night. We, so. Oh, dude, tell me about it. I know that's why. I mean, we've been. This has been extremely easy for me in terms of the t- the conversation flow is great. Uh, and then I was going to say, like, in your creative uh, self, as you're trying to figure out what it is to do and how to avoid other things, uh, if you ever want to create anything from, you know, 10 seconds to five minutes to 15 minutes, you want to make segments for us to play on this show. Oh, man, I would love to. I would love to do that. What a great idea. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you want to. Yeah, that would be like, easy look, for me to do, actually. That'd, you know, that'd be really you, easy and fun. If yeah. you ever just come up with an idea like, oh, I could just say this weird thing and then point and do a little twirl, then I'll give it, send it to John, and then John will play it on the show. That's you cool. know what I mean? That way you can be here more often, I you know, because I, I think this is great. And, you know, any chance we have to talk about music and life and, and just get a positive, you know, your, your attitude is very positive. And Mike Dillon was also extremely positive last week, and I try and be positive. So all these musicians that I know are... Are, are doing a great job of helping me feel less stressed out. You know what? Uh, me too. I, I've been reaching out to a lot of my friends and a lot of friends that I used to play with when I used to be in bands. I used to, and, and, and it's such a beautiful uh, exercise <laughs> in sanity to, to reach yeah. out to people that are smarter than you are <laughs> and better than you are. I've been doing that a lot. Calmer, and uh, and it just, it's are. always been putting things into perspective and, uh, Man, yeah, Mike Dillon, he's a force of nature. I, that guy is so amazing. Yeah, talk he about was touring. So you much and him. Fun. Yeah, yeah, no, you he's an, that artist. is an animal. That dude's a, a real force of nature animal. Yeah, between the, between the weeks, I think we have like you know five hundred days of tour a year between you and him. Yeah, yeah, so, no, I'm I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 cop to that that I probably stay as busy as him. But he he's got a, a, a kind of energy that is beyond what i do i mean he's he's Just doing his own music but he's playing everybody else's too and his you know he plays all the different instruments and he's an absolute master of you know the vibraphone and and all the percussion instruments and and uh on a, on a real true level that most most uh, on a real true mastery level that most people aren't at for sure yeah, his his attitude his yeah his outlook i mean much like yours and what i try to make mine in my own way you know it's just it's so accepting and so you know it's just so nonchalant there's no you know like there's there's a self that we present when we do these things but at the same time i feel like that's very genuine you know it's you know it's crazy i got one quick mike dylan story this is a good one um he uh he uh uh he used to be in this band called critters buggin a long time ago with scarrick and brad hauser on bass and matt chamberlain on drums who were they were all basically the new bohemians edie burkell that was like her backing band kind of um, they're all from North Texas. They all went to North Texas State University. It's, it's kind of an amazing uh, scene. Um, and my old band, old, old band, the Fabulous Hedgehogs, opened up for Critters Buggin' in the mid-90s sometime. And I couldn't even remember when. And it was at this club in, in Eugene, Oregon that I'm pretty sure closed down. I couldn't remember to save my life. And all, this, all these years had gone by and I ran into them in New Orleans. <laughs> I think at the jazz fest or something, I ran into him and I went up to him and I was like, Hey man, I don't know if you remember me. I met you like 20 years ago, you know? Um, I, I, and he's like sort of looking at me and I go, I played, a, I played in this band called the fabulous hedgehogs. And he goes, Oh yeah. Yeah. April 27th, 1997 at the wild duck. <laughs> and he knew the date and he's like, yeah, Tony Williams had passed away that week. That was a really hard week for me. A famous drummer, Tony Williams. And, uh, and uh, I was like, wow. Uh, he goes, yeah, I'm like Rain Man with, with, with gigs. I remember every single one. I remember. He does. He yeah, remember, he's... yeah, he remembered, he remembered Dead Larry. You know what I mean? We just played a Sunday in Minneapolis years ago and then yeah. came back through the area. You know, it's like, it was, it was, it's nice when, it's nice to be remembered every, I mean, to remember every gig though. I mean, I'd, ha- I'd have to yeah. have behaved differently in the past to remember every gig. Amen, but brother. I yep. can, I can, you know, I remember a lot of them now. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> almost all of them. Almost all. And every once in a while, we get a flat. You ever get those flashes of a gig you haven't thought of since it happened? Just like, oh god, I totally forgot I did that. Or you end up in the same on the same street as a as a venue. You just you know, locked out. That happens to me occasionally. Oh yeah. 
Uh oh. No, it's uh, fine. Everything's fine. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> hey, does I, I forgot? I forgot. I touched does, something. <laughs> does Zoom have a time limit? I thought I read that they did, but I. Uh, uh, we 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 pay to not. Nice. Pay. You got the premium. We okay, have a yeah, whole so day. That's how they get we have. You. That's how they get hours. you. <laughs> we have a whole day. Sweet. It's really not. Sweet. I mean, you pay by the year, you know, and it's like just you know, it's like you know, a hundred and some change. Like it's not, it's not unreasonable. And now John and I have been, uh, by by I, I mean John has been. Uh, researching all these new like competitors to zoom coming out so we're about to get some competition to this yeah whole it's probably night. good it's probably good uh to mix it up yeah it just zoom. help help people you know and like you know because i think you know i don't think zoom was like you know what we're gonna have people do we're gonna do live music events through no. the internet like no you know they I, I was hearing somebody talking about this on an interview saying how the zoom's been around forever they've, they've been around for like 10 years and and it just all of a sudden, for some reason, everybody jumped on it with this thing. But it wasn't that there was any strategy involved whatsoever. And it's right. definitely not the best one, you know. But I, who knows? I don't know what the best one is. Dude, Nobody yeah, I, you know. And then once you get a handle on one, they all kind of start to make more sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man, we got some love here in the chat. Yeah, oh, good peoples, goodness. man. It's, it's nice good to I feel folks. like I'm getting to hang out with the with my Midwest peeps. Yeah, man. Right and we, now. you know, we're here. We're out here. It's just starting to get nice. It was in the 70s today. We're looking at maybe 80 coming up soon. Oh, nice. So, you know, it's been, it's been, although I, 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 I'm a true Minnesotan now. I was out. It was 45, maybe 50 degrees. And I was definitely out in my shorts, my flip flops. And I was like, yep, this is the people I pointed at when I first moved here. Like, how are they out there standing in their shorts and flip flops? It is 45 degrees. And you're like, yep. <laughs> That's what we do here. <laughs> Amen. God uh, bless you. I know. It's a crazy world. And I don't even like the cold. I don't know what I'm doing here, but my hair <laughs> likes the hot humidity. I want to. Hawaii was great. A little far away, though. <laughs> a little far. <sighs> well, cool. John, how you doing? So let's uh, let's say we next week uh, on the show, we have uh, another guest from a, a really amazing band. Billy Browse of Papadocio is going to be here. I know. Papadocio, uh, I've known about them for probably a solid decade or so um, since either from Michigan, I believe, or Ohio. I can't remember. One of those. Ohio. Ohio, Ohio yeah. And, uh, uh, and uh, I had a friend that got into them when they were just playing stupid bars and house parties that came back to Iowa City and was like, this band, Papadocio. I'm like, ah, whatever. And of course. I don't know if you know. Resonance was their festival or if they were just very influential in it, but yeah, they have. I think a, it's theirs. Yeah, I think they I remember. Have a, yeah, they a like very theirs. large presence there at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, They're they awesome. Have, they they helped form the. I, I don't know. I don't want to like lump them in or like miss, miss, miss speak, misquote them, but like the Jamtronic world of like just playing, you know, mi mixing the EDM kids with the Jam kids. I felt like they had a heavy hand in that. You know, more than more than myself. I'm trying to get the punk kids and the nerds. I'm trying to get the nerds, man. The nerds to go camping. That's my number one goal. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the sleight of hand magicians to talk to the mentalists. <laughs> Not no, easy. All, Not easy. We all got our battles. So yeah, <laughs> Those are like <laughs> opposing camps, definitely. I'm just trying to get the gut bucket players to relate to the diddly bow virtuosos. <laughs> And that's comedy. That's you got to bring it back from the thing we talked about earlier. I'm just getting warmed up, man. We can't stop now. No, no, we got to stop. We got to stop. Uh, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's getting dark here. I, uh, you know, I, uh, I know what what you're two hours earlier. You're two yes, hours. two hours. Yeah. So you know, just around dinner time for you, you can you know drink your dinner coffee. Amen. <laughs> After dinner coffee. After mid, dinner. Mid supper coffee. Late night coffee. <laughs> Breakfast, eleven Z's, lunch, I mean, I mean, brunch, coffees. And yeah, I'm I'm the kind of guy that like I will wake I, I will like go to bed excited to wake up the next day to drink my first cup of coffee Dude, it's the best. or That's, caffeinated I know. tea. It's so beautiful. I'll be like, you know, I go to bed right now. I can wake up and I'll drink coffee and then I'll be excited. I know. So fun. So fun to make. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so if we kept talking, then there's no way we would. Oh yeah, people would tell us never stop, never, never stop, never stop. Never ever stop. Well, but we will. We'll we'll pause. We'll we'll take brief uh, intermissions between our content. But you can catch Radio One Guy every Monday. Yes. Five and, p.m. Uh, Pacific. Five p.m. Pacific. For those of you in the Central Time, that is seven, seven o'clock. Anywhere between seven and three a.m. 
Yeah. <laughs> good good chance. There's a good chance you'll see it. And uh, so you can catch that one guy every week. Catch me, of course, next week. Uh, oh, I'd like to let everyone know that next this Saturday, so in two days, the new Dead Larry single, uh, it's a song I wrote called Make It, is it will be available everywhere on Spotify. And uh, we've been sitting on this recording for about two years. And we finally, you know, something happened. We had so much time, so we just got it done. Um, and I'm excited to show the world. A lot of people probably heard it out at shows, so I'm excited to release that. And uh, make sure to check out Live Stream Cover Challenge, all the bands. Make sure to check out, what was the hedgehog name? Of your the band? Fabulous Hedgehogs. The Fabulous Hedgehogs. Yes. <laughs> you know, get a get an old, old record from the olden days. We got them. <laughs> we got we. That was back when you used to press two thousand CDs, and we, we used to play for fifteen people at our local once a month gig. So, yeah. I got a lots of them left. Got lot, dude. I'll take one. Yeah, I'll, I'll save you one for sure. I bet it's fabulous. It is. It's pretty good. We worked hard <laughs> on it. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yes. That's all you can add. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody. Thank you for tuning in. And and this is this has been definitely one of my favorite experiences on the show, especially in this format. I love it. This is great. Amen, brother. Um, John, you want to say hello one last time? I just definitely want to thank you for joining us, Mike. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And, Pleasure's uh, mine, brother. Thank you. Thank you really you? again for when we got the show started. Like, I, like I asked you one question that night, and then I think you and I chatted for, I don't know, two or three hours, and you were like, try this, try this, try this, try this. <laughs> it, like, it, it gave me just so much stuff to run off of, and I mean, look look where we've taken it this was this was joe sitting in front of his computer with his eyes going every which direction back and forth and i was like dude let's make this a show so yeah, yeah. I, interviewing I'm my wife <laughs> that's how it starts but there's always places to go that was the hardest interview okay i know this is another tangent but like interviewing people you know oh yeah is so much harder because you have to pretend like you don't know. You have to ask questions like, "This is the first time you ever talked to a person." I'm like, what do I ask Angela? Like, what is like? So, where'd you, where'd you grow up? What do you do with your days? I mean, so what I did know. you do today? <laughs> uh, so I stand next to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, Dude, remember I, when I, we watched that that episode of The Expanse? That was cool. That was cool. I, I've hardly interviewed anybody. That's that's a pretty awesome skill. You're uh, you're working on there i've working I've, on I've, it you know I've hardly done i've only i've only had one guest on my on radio one guy and he was a friend my friend jake willis and he came on he actually sat in the van with me and we jammed jake on. willis from illinois yeah yeah the, oh the, i know jake willis the man the myth oh he's such the a man the guy. myth the legend yeah what a, what a he, uh, beautiful person he is yeah gorgeous 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 voice gorgeous music wonderful Go person gorgeous so beard insightful. gorgeous beard oh yes. yeah your beard your beard bros i mean yeah he's, he's longer he's got, historically he is, he is, he is I don't three know. or four times longer than mine but <laughs> No, I just love that guy. I that's cool. Guy. Well, that's a great guest to have, though, if you're going to have one. Jake Willis. It man. was. It was. And I want, the plan was to have him all the time, but I just, I can't, the way my setup is in my van, it's almost impossible. But uh, I'm going to, I'm going to work on it. Maybe with this technology, I can come up with a real creative way to do it. It's, a, it's different. Yeah. And you know, we owe you answers to questions if you need. <laughs> For, sure. For sure. I got nothing, though. The technology, we're reaching my point of like, I'm at a level where like, I'm just hanging on for dear life. I'm like, Okay, I get the buttons and the cameras, and it's uh, okay. It's all set up. They like to keep my job easy. I talk. Totally. Well, you know what they say. What do they say? Apparently, it's all in the cars. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> Did you have that in there the whole time? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How'd you talk with that? Uh, my uncle My uncle recently ate a cell phone. He's a magic guy. He had a cell wow. phone with the light on and ate it in a video <laughs> and i was like how did you do that like what did you just just pull this out i'm on facebook and there's my uncle like with the camera with the light on just shoves it in his mouth so so i i am so impressed by this in and out of the mouth thing people just yeah. keep there's a lot more space in there than me I guess. and beards no. and beards beards yeah uh, I, i'll just substitute hair i'll pull things out of my hair or something that's a that's a Fine place to hide objects. <laughs> I, have a, I have a buddy of mine that does that. He actually pulls, a, not, no joke, he pulls a rabbits out of his hair. You know, he's really good. <laughs> nice, dude. Yeah, I want to do that. Now it's my new goal. By the end of quarantine, I will have. Yeah, it. please. I expect to see it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and then check out that one guy, everyone, and stay tuned next week for. Oh man, I just forgot his name. I was James something. No, no, Billy, Billy James. Billy Browse of Papadocio. 
We'll be here next week, same time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check out that one guy, Radio One Guy, Mondays at 7 Central, 5 Pacific specific time. Ow. And, ah, uh, yeah. Ow. Ow. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time. Peace, brothers. Because I'm with you through thick and thin. Whatever trouble you are in, I don't care whatever you do. Just know that I love you. Oh, oh, oh I love you. You know, sometimes you got trouble. So many troubles to getting you down. But you don't have to worry about your troubles no more, cause well, I always be around I'll, because I'm with you through thick and thin. Whatever trouble you are in, I don't care whatever you do, just know that I love you. Oh, I love you.